Greetings, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. This is my brother in Christ, Grant. He's a worship leader and he's in deliverance ministry. He's very anointed, loves Jesus so much. On fire for Jesus, he moved in, rented a room here. I get to see his daughter. He goes to Men at War with me at Heritage. He's a part of a lot of things. And we're going to talk about something that's been burdening us from the Lord. I know it's been on my heart for over a year for the kids, the kids' minds. You can see it's like you can see the demonic attack is after the kids completely dysfunctional sexualities. They see it on cereal boxes. They, they're being taught it in school. And we're, we're to train up kids in righteousness and speak God into them. And so it's very obvious. Many people can see it. And so we're crying out for watchmen, watch women to gather churches in unity and to pray over things that we've been holding in and not bringing to the altar and repenting of and letting a burden out of. And so I want to start this with a prayer. And then we're going to get into scripture to show how we're going to follow scripture completely. Let every man be a liar but God. So we don't trust man's interpretation. We go to the scripture and if things are off, we're like, it's not right. No wonder the Holy Spirit's not coming in power. No wonder there's not a, a massive revival. No, no wonder. So let's pray. I love to pray over Israel in the morning because God never slumbers on Israel. He has a plan for Israel that's already proven true so much so that the Bible is indisputable because of it. Israel's less than 1% of the population. God said he will bless those who bless Israel, curse those who curse Israel, and he will make them a great nation. Less than 1%, yet they have obviously been blessed, right? And they've been scattered. So I pray God, because God says he watches Israel from the Euphrates, all of that land. So I vision all that stuff and I see Syria, I see Damascus, I see um, Jerusalem, I see Judah, I see Tel Aviv, I see all these areas. And in Ezekiel, it also says that God is, when he gathers them all back up, that happened in 1948, that they're going to prosper. And, he, and we also see that there's going to be visions in last days. We see it, in, we see it said in Joel, and then we see it fulfilled in Acts, but that's a double fulfillment that's coming that we see happening now with people getting visions in Iran that are turning to Jesus, people getting visions in Saudi Arabia that are turning to Jesus and they are literally leaving family. They're leaving everything and they're being gathered up by people that are out there missionaries. And I talk to some of them and I pray over them. So we're praying over Israel. We're praying also in Ezekiel. It matches up with Revelation. And we see that God is such an awesome God that he does things to show he is God. And these nations that are going to be warring against Israel, some of them are going to realize, whoa, this is the one true God and they're going to repent. And we can see that in Revelation. So we're praying over Israel. We're praying for the persecuted Christians in Iran, in China, in Hong Kong, all over that whole area. We're covering it with the blood of Jesus to start this. And then we're bringing it to the inside of our cup. And we're saying, we're crying out that the corporate body of Christ would be able to preach the word boldly forward and not be hindered by fear of man. That's the enemy trying to trap us into what are they going to think of us if we're this bold? What are they going to think of us if we believe God's word that much on everything that he says? No, we believe it. We believe you, God. We, we believe. We, you know why we believe it so much? Because the martyrs prove it to us. Nobody would go to a persecuted, tortured death for a lie. That's just not reality. So I'm going to start with prophecy and how, how Paul talks about it and tells us and gives us instructions. This is so you can do your own. I'll put links up after the video is done. 1 Corinthians 14. So Paul's telling us to search after these gifts. Let me see. Let me see if I should start on chapter 12. Yeah, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So he's saying, seek out these gifts. We want these gifts, Lord. We want you to pour out all these gifts on us. We're hungry for it, Lord. The Spirit of God, we want it poured out. There's diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
Different administrations, but the same Lord. Diversities of operations, the same God worketh it all. Manifest, manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For one is given by the Spirit of the word of wisdom. So it starts with wisdom. Wisdom of God is word. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. After that, we're, we're getting into faith. Give us all these, Lord. Give the body all of these. Wisdom, knowledge, faith. And then we see some more gifts. Healing. Healing would include deliverance, miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits. So being able to see that, oh, that's not of God. Diverse kinds of tongues. Okay, so these are the gifts that we're praying and seeking that Paul's talking about. Now I'm going to go to Corinthians chapter 14 because there's explicit instructions. This is all to edify. The word edify in Greek means to build up into holiness so that the Holy Spirit is not grieved. An exhortation, lift up, build up, protect, warn, comfort, love. All this has to be done in love. Now instructions come right now. Do not speak in tongues without an interpreter because that's for you to do privately. If you see people doing that, it's kind of, it, it's a red flag based on what Paul's saying right there. If they're up on a stage speaking in tongues without an interpreter, we might get into that a little bit when we talk about a video that I posted that I took down. I don't want to, I don't want to get into arguments. So there's another key verse here, and then I'm going to go to Deuteronomy on what isn't of God and what he says is an abomination that can't be in the church. We have to be cleansed of all these things. Paul says that these that the spirit of the prophecies all have to line up with the spirit of the prophets. So remember I said a lot of these prophets, Isaiah 700 years before Christ, he was martyred. Jeremiah was martyred. That's 600 years before Christ. And they were teaching us a lot about what we're going to go to. And so let's go to Deuteronomy. This is what has to be out of the church. Okay, you guys read this stuff for yourselves. Most of you know most of this. Here's Deuteronomy chapter 18. Avoid wicked customs. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire or one who practices witchcraft. Okay, so witchcraft, a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all these things are an abomination to the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God for these nations, which will dispossess. Listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord... So all that has to be out, okay? The Ouija boards, the, the mediums, any of that stuff that you see in churches... Get it out. Repent. It's a false. It's a false spirit. It's what. It's what um, Jeremiah prophesied. Seventy years worth of captivity in Babylon over. These are altars for Satan. Asarte. These are uh, Molech. You've seen a lot of the posts. Um, it's. It's get rid of God's word. Make it subjective to you what you want it to be. Get rid of marriage. The sanctity of marriage, bring in homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, destroy the genders, and now sacrifice babies to, to demons. And this all has to do with that. So if you're doing any of this, in, in, a, in, in, a, in a way, it ties to all of it. So that's why this has to be watched and on guard against in churches. Okay, so while I was in sleep, kind of preaching in my sleep, talking to God, restless. He started showing me the parable in Matthew, which is, you know the parable where some of the seed, which is the word of God, falls on ground. The ground is our heart, and some of it gets choked out by the wor world. And so we know that 
And now we're, there's another parable that talks about the enemy sowed tares among the wheat. So look at it like that. We're the wheat and the enemy is sowing poison. So we, we don't want that poison. We want to repent. We want to go to the altar. Jesus paid it all for everybody. We love everybody. And I'm going to introduce Grant. And so, but I'm going to finish with one more Bible verse before we get into that Kundalini spirit stuff. And so we're either buying from Jesus and what he did, or we're buying from the beast system in the world. And Jesus tells the church of Laodicea, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by the fire that you may become rich, white garments so that you may be clothed and your shameful nakedness ex not exposed and salve to anoint your eyes that you may see. Those I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be earnest and repent. So we love Jesus so much, you guys, that we want to see the body of Christ come together. We want to see them. We want to see the body of Christ pray over things like suicide, like prescription drug use, like um, what the kids are being taught at schools, whatever else the church has, and come together like and alternate at different churches and and just get stuff out and say, look, we see things that are wrong, and we wanna we want we feel like we're kind of fake showing up to church, singing praises, and then going back out and buying from the world. So that's where our heart's at. If any of your guys' hearts like that, encourage us, think about it, pray on it. It, it. Paul also says we prophesy in part. So all the prophets in the Old Testament, they all had a different part of Jesus Christ and different parts of prophecies that started to unfold later. So the Kundalini spirit, I don't even want to really get into it, but my discernment, I'm a discerner. I'm a discerner of spirits. I could see that it's an unholy spirit. I see chanting. So what we read was that you don't do that. You don't do the, uh, the chanting. You don't do that stuff without an interpreter because then we're like, well, what's really going on? And then, and then they push things into people. So I'm going to let Grant speak on that. He's a deliverance minister and he's been to a church. I think it's called Iris. And we're not going to like name tons of names and, and we're turn this. Name it. We're not going to name we it. We don't need to name we're names. Name it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Manuel, think. children of God. Um, I just, um, I'm, I'm just excited for what God's doing in, in, um, in our church and our hearts. Um, we've, we've got some revival going on, um, but there's, there's also what, what the Bible talks about, that there's going to be doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. Kundalini is a seducing spirit. It's a new age movement. Kundalini awakening, third eye awakening, and um, it's basically a Hindu spirit. It's a Hindu demon. It's a Hindu um, serpent spirit. Is what they're um, taught that it lives. They teach that it lives in you already, and they just activate it. So uh, basically, it's imparted. It's not. It's not already living in you. It's imparted to you from a guru. Um, so if you're into the the guru stuff or the Hindu stuff, um, you can go see the guru and then they can impart that into you through Shaktapat Dispa. They'll touch your head and then it, it imparts through them. They're the, they're the one that uh, carries it and then it spreads through contact um, to the other person that, that they're trying to impart it into who's seeking you know, the third eye awakening or the kundalini awakening. Um, and so that is a, it's a copycat of the Holy Spirit. And some, um, some people have brought that to church that happened in the nineties, the Toronto outpouring It spread to churches in the Midwest. It's in, it's in churches in California. Um, the two churches I, I saw it at were, um, in the central coast, um, in Grover beach and in Napomo, and they were not very big churches. Um, but I'd researched the, um, the way that the manifestations look. I've looked at gurus doing the Shaktapat Dispa, imparting it uh, and doing Kundalini Awakening. Then I've also looked at other quote unquote outpourings of the Holy Spirit at some churches from the Toronto Blessing and other um, pastors that were there that have spread that to their mega churches in the Midwest and whatnot. 
Um, so there's certain things, they call it kiras, the shoulders will start to spasm. Kiras, it's an uncontrollable spasm that happens. There's also rhythmic swaying in a circular motion of the body and head. And then there's, um, uh, can also manifest with um, people dropping to the ground unconscious and kind of just spasming on the ground, um, which isn't uh, a move of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is peaceful, it's in order. And usually when you're praying for the Holy Spirit, there's repentance involved. Um, you're praying in Jesus name. You're asking for the yes. Father to do the will yes. um, and to, to deliver Jesus. the Comforter, the Paraclete. Um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is the gift from the Father. Um, and so it will actually, the Holy Spirit will actually come to your house straight from the Father and no one has to touch you or impart that into you. That's already happened to me a couple times, um, which there's, there's a whole another set of things that needs to happen within the believer's heart to get to that place where you're ready for the Holy Spirit. You got to get saved, then you got to get sanctified, then you can ask for the Holy Spirit and then God will give that to you because he wants you to do the word with the Holy Spirit. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for you to just have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. The baptism is for you to go out to the ends of the world, preach the true gospel, heal the sick, um, raise the dead, cast out devils in Jesus' name. That's the actual gospel um, that the, the um, disciples who became apostles did. Crazy, Lord. Um, Crazy, so Lord. in Acts 2.38, I wanted to read that. Um, that's something Crazy, what, that, that just really, you know, kind of exemplifies what um what right when that um <clears throat> right when the holy spirit poured out like um jesus had said uh when the pentecost happened um acts 2 38 peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the holy spirit this was right after everybody started um, praying in tongues up in the upper room and everyone was wondering what is going on. But they heard the, the, the apostles speaking in different languages, but they were all Galileans. So they were confused. Are they drunk? What's going on? They're not. They're, being drunk in the spirit's not a spiritual gift. That's the thing that people made up to cover what the Kundalini is doing at false anointings and false outpourings. There is no drunk in the spirit. That's not in the Bible. Um, but you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you might tremble in reverence, but it's going to be a very orderly, peaceful thing. You're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be scared. You're going to know that that's God moving because yes. it's going to be very gradual and gentle. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman and the Father, is, um, the Father in heaven is a father of order, not of chaos and disorder. He's a father of order and there's a specific order to getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it does take sanctification, it does take deliverance, it does take repentance. Those are criteria to be eligible to receive the gift. And then when you receive the gift, God wants us to go out and use the gift in love to glorify him and to do his will, which is what praying the scripture is. Praying for healing, praying for deliverance, praying for uh, people to get saved. That's what the gospel is. It's not to feel good or to like have, have a social club. Um, it's great to be part of the body and the body has different gifts, but the gospel is Jesus Christ saves. If you accept the free gift of the cross and confess that he's your Lord and savior, then you're saved. That's a miracle in itself. And then all the other miracles of healing come from the Holy Spirit. Deliverance comes from the father. Deliver us from the enemy. Let us not be led astray. So when the Holy Spirit indwells, we're not going to be led into the lie of the enemy. And that's part of getting delivered is figuring out where the beast system, the fallen world system has tricked us into believing the lie so that we can unplug from that and look at the word of God and see where did the world trick us? Okay, wow, that doesn't line up with the word of God. I need to renounce something in my life. Turn away from that. That's what repentance is. Turn away from that sin and that lie and go to the cross and then Jesus Christ can forgive us. Then we can bind demons. We can loose angels. We can loose Holy Ghost fire. That's scriptural. We can bind and loose. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Jesus gave us the keys of the kingdom, okay, as repented, spiritual believers. And so um, kundalinis, are, um, kundalinis are a demon, and it's a copycat somewhat of Holy Spirit, and um, kind of there's a, an emotional feeling that people get when they get the kundalini 
Um, if you if you look at people's third eye awakening testimonies, usually it's not a pleasant experience. They're either burning or itching all over everywhere where they have skin on their body for a, a couple days in a row, and they're they're kind of not having a great time um, once the third eye is awakened. But um, it's basically a demon coming into you and it's and it's tormenting you. Um, and so you can see weird manifestations when the kundalini is being imparted, and people will do bark, bark like dogs and do do weird spasmic things, the kiras, the swaying, those are, the, no one's praying for any healing or any, any, anything in Jesus name. There is, there is nothing they might say, there's going to be a move of the Holy Spirit, but then they don't, they don't pray in Jesus name and no one's repenting. And there's usually just someone touching people and then they're falling down and shaking. And that's, that's a pretty obvious kundalini. Uh, but, but check out what the Hindu gurus are doing. Cause there's always a touch. They're, they have to impart it. They have to transfer it from them to the person. Did they try um, to do it to you? To uh, to oh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I came up to an altar call um, at the second church I went to. My neighbor brought me. Um, and uh, it was uh, the, the pastor invited us. Oh, there's going to be a move of the Holy Spirit. Come on up if anyone wants prayer. And I always go to altar calls wherever the Holy Spirit's moving because I, I love encountering the Holy Spirit. And you know, getting a deeper relationship or getting a new fresh anointing of whatever God wants me to do and getting revelation. So I'm usually up at the altar when there's an altar call. Um, uh, the pastor prayed for someone. Uh, no, excuse me. Let me take that back. He touched someone. He didn't say any words. The guy fell to his knees and that was kind of like, ooh. Uh, so let's wait a minute. No one's praying for anything in Jesus name here. So he kind of the pastor walks to another uh, individual there and it was almost like something grabbed him and he was like, oh, yeah, Holy Spirit. And I was like, what is <laughs> the, what is this about? And so he touched this lady and she started doing the kiras and uh, she was shaking and fell on the ground in about probably five seconds and was on the ground just twitching. And I was like, I was praying against it. I was like, break the chains of the Kundalini in Jesus name, bind it, break it, loose, loose angels, bind the devils, uh, Holy Ghost fire on that Kundalini in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Then I was across the room. And as I was rebuking, um, that pastor turned around and looked me directly in the eyes because the familiar spirit that was with him was telling him someone's praying. And so he turned around and looked at me and I, I was like, okay, all right. So I guess I got to stay now, you know, <laughs> you can't, can't just, can't just leave right at that point. So I've been identified. Um, but he went around to, um, he went around to a couple people and there was some more impartations happening. And then uh, one of his people wanted to pray with me and he put his hand on my shoulder and I was like, well, oh yeah, whatever you want to do, you know, and I prayed with him and I was binding and loosing and breaking chains, Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus, you know, commanding devils out, breaking, breaking assignments of the devil in Jesus name. And the guy was like, uh, wow, uh, is God doing something in your life? I think God's doing something in your life. And I was like, maybe, yeah, maybe God's doing something in my life. He's like, well, what's your name? I was like, oh, my name's Graham. Where's your church? Oh, yeah, I'm just in San Clemente, yeah. Um, you know, that's my home church down there. He's like, okay, all right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, and he just kind of walked off. And then uh, the main pastor came by and wanted to pray for me. And um, I was like, well, uh, sure, whatever you think you got to do, you know, and um, he was giving me a prophecy, but it wasn't from God. So I wasn't listening to it. Um, it wasn't from my God. It was from from his God, um, where whatever Kundalini God he was, you know, um, worshiping at the time. Um, anyway, uh, so he, he gave some words. I didn't I didn't listen to that, but um, I did want to stand my ground and not run out of the run out of the room um, just because there's some devils in the room. You know, that's that's kind of not not the way to um, engage engage the enemy is to you know be bold and not not fear and and we're suited up in in spiritual armor. Yes. We've got the sword Praise of the spirit, um, and when we pray out to bind and loose, and we and we know that we have authority over the devil in Jesus' name, because that's what Jesus said He gave us as believers. We start releasing the sword of the spirit, and we start commanding you know chains to be broken in Jesus' name, loosing and binding, loosing angels, binding demons, loosing Holy Ghost fire, loosing the blood of Jesus Christ. That the, the demons can't do anything to that. Um, so. He was trying to impart something and that, that didn't happen. He was trying to impart, impart it to my neighbor, it didn't happen. Um, and then he was doing it to other people. They were, they were spasming and falling on the ground and crying. And, and I was like, let's go, I'll tell you about it when we get out. <laughs> you know, so we, so we left, I showed him some videos of Shaktipat Dispa, some of the things that, that the, the gurus are doing. And he was like, 
Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I kind of got a weird feeling from him and he told me things no one would have known. There was absolutely no way he would have known this. Uh, and he was asking me, well, how would he know these things? I was like, well, if he's a real warlock, he's got a demon there whispering everything to him. It's a familiar spirit telling him all the stuff about you because the devil watches people and he knows what you're doing. And so he would hear that demon talking to him and be able to give you a prophecy. And um, so that's probably what Blind was going spirit. on. Yes, Blind spirit, spirit of divination. Yeah. So he's he's using seducing spirits, which that's what Kundalini. That's why is. we don't. That's why any mediums are bad. Yeah. Any enneagrams, it's, anything it's like that yeah. is like sorcery, sorcery drug yeah. use goes with it. These are kids we're talking about. Yeah. It's like, come on, let's make the altar a holy place for God alone. Amen. Let's repent. Let's have revival. Yeah. Let's have freedom. Let's have testimony of Jesus. Amen. Let's talk about Jesus, yeah. the healer, the redeemer, the deliverer, the provider, the peace, the, the Amen. prince of peace. Amen. Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the spiritual gifts are real. Um, it, it doesn't really take that, that much to really get God to, to want to give the spiritual gifts. He, he, he goes through a little period where... He's seeing how long has it been since you've really repented from that sin pattern the enemy has had you stuck in. Um, I'm kind of about about four years into my sanctification process. Um, I really got serious, I would say 2014, and really repented of things that the Holy Spirit convicted me of. And God was like, Grant, you just got to deal with it now. And I was like, okay. I can see that that is something I need to deal with. And I was like, take that from me, Lord. I don't, I don't want to do that. I turned away and he honored that. So about a year later, I got healed from an infirmity that was in my back. I had a, you know, infirmity, which is a demon living in my back for about eight years, causing sciatic back pain. I get healed from that at the altar. And then a year after that, I got delivered um, from fear, pride, a lot of different rejection, self-rejection, a bunch of different spirits. So after fear was gone, then I was able to pray for people. Um, and then as I was praying for people, there was little, little anointings going on, little measures of the baptism, little, and, and I was pushing the envelope of what I was comfortable praying for. And then I was seeing God heal people. I was seeing yes. people <laughs> say, Grant, like, what is, what is happening? Like yeah. this, everything that we just prayed about, like God just did that and healed me. And I was like, well, yeah, that's what God does. He loves you and wants to heal you. That is his will, is to heal you. And we find out, you know, if there's unforgiveness, we go to repentance. If there's things that they need to renounce, we renounce it. And that's part of the breakthrough is, is having, uh, having the, um, the legal rights of the enemy uh, washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when we repent, that's what happens in the spirit. And then the devil's like, dang it, I don't have rights to be here anymore. So then you can command them out of your life, out of your body, out of your home, out of your business, out of your school, out of your ministry out of your neighborhood Freedom. but it takes it takes kind of when you get into bigger demons principalities powers it takes like an intercessory group rather than one person dealing with a person that has a you know demonic afflictions demonic oppressions um it takes it takes more prayer of specific demons which is why we want to gather yeah, all the, the churches together yeah. we want to gather them all together so that it's more empowered the there's more authentic there's more uh, transparency, yeah, okay. there's more freedom, there's letting go of bondages and the Holy Spirit jumps in us when we're releasing things and, and when you don't have a bondage to fear anymore, or fear of man, you just walk in full victory Amen. and then you take one more step yeah. and then one more step and then you're like, wow, I gotta tell other people about this. Amen. And then the whole, every area is transformed. PTSD broke, he prays over uh, the military base. We have a brother, bad PTSD on Pharmacia and stuff like that. And there's some gnarly stuff going on because these veterans. So these things can be broken. Addictions can right. be broken. The Porn fashion, has to be. Yeah. All that stuff has to be cast out. You right. can't have that. It's not a Holy Spirit environment right. to maintain half of your worldly life right. and, and expect to walk in power. That's why I believe the church is quiet on a lot of these issues because they're stuck. They're we're blind. Pre we're pretending. They're stuck we're and they're blind. Okay. Yeah. And when you're walking in full fire and power, you're like, so, come on, you guys, wake yeah, up. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. He's the victory. He fulfills all of scripture. Yeah. Everything points to him. Let's, let's amen. preach. Let's go. Let's go. Yep. And so that's where we're at. We want to worship. We want to do some worship yeah. music too. We're going we're to play Spirit Breakout. So if you guys want to worship with us, we're going to worship. But thank you guys for truth. listening to yeah. us. And I don't, I'm not going to post uh, anything to create any controversy like that video <laughs> yesterday. I just wanted to 
follow up on it, and that's it. We're preaching uh, redemption draws nigh, not looking for anything to be disunified. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are saved by faith. We are justified by what Jesus did on the cross. Not by works or we'd be able to boast. But what he did on the cross is so powerful that we refute our old life. We live in a new life. We want freedom for everybody. We want the addictions broken. We want depression broken. We want kids to be brought up in the full armor of God, knowing who they are, knowing who they are in God. Yes, Jesus. Praise you, Lord.
Holy Spirit armor over us in Jesus' name. Lord, we rededicate our hearts to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes. We go all in with you, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's no more on the fence with you, Jesus. Lord, we repent from our rebellion and our unrepentant sins. Lord, we lay that at the cross, Lord. We ask your blood to forgive us, wash that away. ourselves before you. You are faithful to hear us. Yes, Jesus. You're so faithful. You've done so much already. And you said greater things. Greater things you shall do. You shall do now that you've gone to the Father. Praise you, Jesus. You didn't leave us alone when you gave us the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Loose your angels around us. Around our churches, Lord. Praise you, God. We rebuke the lie of the enemy of Jesus' name. We break the chains of the enemy sword of the spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We pray Holy Ghost fire on the camp of the enemy that's assigned against us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Close your angels around our school, our children's schools, around our churches in Jesus' mighty name. Thank him all the time, and your fear will go. Even if you're going through a struggle, thank him for it, because that shows God that you know that he's in control of everything. So like when something's going wrong, say, wow, this is an opportunity to show God how much I trust him. I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for the high ups and for the low downs. Lord, we want to pray for any marriages right now, that they would be repaired, reconciled, that they would like be softened, that there would be no more like fighting, that the fighting is of the enemy. He wants you back and forth like a ping pong ball arguing instead of just saying, I'm sorry. So we're praying for marriages. We're praying for people who are struggling with illness, that the Lord would show you that he is in it and that he, he can beat it. He will break it. You'll either be healed here or you'll be with him in heaven. And even the people that were healed through Jesus, they ended up going to heaven. So it's a temporary healing we have here. We get our redemption eternally there. God bless you guys. Be encouraged. Be empowered. Thank Him in all things. Just keep thanking Him. Depression flees. You just keep saying, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You're so good. I love you, Lord. If you're going through a struggle, He's allowing it so you can become more faithful to Him. It works out to the benefit. He's got me through so much that I, I basically laugh if it's hard. I go, oh, you must have something in here. This must be for the body. This must. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Now I've slowed down to where I'm like more patient. So this has taught me patience. The more you go through, the more patience you, you develop. We love everybody. The worst child molester. The people I couldn't forgive before. I don't want them going to hell. I want them coming to Jesus. I want them saved. I want the Hillary Clintons to turn. I don't want them going to hell. I want them saved. We want every soul saved. We don't have any hate. We don't, the flesh and blood, it's the spirits behind it that we're rebuking. We're not rebuking people. We don't want the spirit to control them anymore. So we have power because we see in the spirit. We're going to judge angels, you guys, the fallen ones. That's what scripture says, and I believe it. Keep studying the word. It'd be like me telling you who's going to win the World Series 700 years from now. What city it's going to be in. Who's going to pitch. Who's going to be the home run hitter. Jesus Christ in the city of Bethlehem. Born out of the lineage of David. Out of the tribe of Judah. Every man failed except Jesus. All this stuff was prophesied way before he fulfills it all. You can't make this up. The word of God is alive and active. Atheists can see it's happening. Agnostics see it's happening. Everybody sees it's happening. Just give your whole heart to Jesus. He'll puncture it and you will be changed, transformed, rearranged. Boom, let's go. We got work to do. We love you.
God, we praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 